Greetings. My name is Noma Tsunochiwe, and I will be sharing tonight about spirit animal wisdom. I'll be using this deck. This is the guidebook that comes with the deck. And I do also have a brand new spirit animal wisdom deck that I will be giving away. And I will be posting the details in the description box on how you can get this beautiful deck, which is beautiful animal wisdom, known as animal medicine by the Native Americans. I have spoken in the earlier videos about spirit animals such as the big the lion from the big cats the mythical creatures such as the dragon and the phoenix we've spoken about the birds like the peacock and the eagle and we've also spoken about other land animals like the elephant and the antelope and the giraffe so there's quite a number of videos i tried to split them up so that it wouldn't be one very long video but there is a lot of wisdom that the animal world has to offer in all spiritual traditions including the bible so the bible actually talks about learning the lessons from the ants especially for lazy people in terms of how the ant stores up its food um, in winter there are other examples of things we can learn from um, animals and that's really the core of what animal wisdom or animal magic is about and just integrating those lessons into your own life, meditating on the behavior, seeing how it can change your behavior. When you work with this deck, it's the deck itself, it actually comes with visualizations and meditations and messages. So today I'm speaking about the different creatures. Uh, I'll, I'll start with the spider. This is actually quite a beautiful picture of a spider. Um, lovely pastel colors it's not the crazily fearsome creature at least from <laughs> this image that we commonly associate with spiders uh, the, i have seen spiders in the wild you know all sorts of beautiful wonderful colors um, and they will spin their webs and they have a very interesting message once you get past the fear factor Personally, I'm not afraid of spiders. I, I have my own other phobias, but spiders aren't one of them. The spider is a dream weaver. The element is of air. The, in Greek mythology, uh, there is a story about a beautiful woman. Well, she was, I'm not sure if she was beautiful, but she was very talented at weaving. And the goddess Hera became very jealous because I believe um, Zeus was attracted to her, may have had an affair with her, if I recall, or admired her. So Hera was very jealous. Um, and at some point, I think there was a competition and Arachne won. And they then... She, she, she was Arachne was then Arachne was then turned into a spider by Hera to continue weaving. That's the legend. Um, so spiders in Latin are known as Arachnids from Arachne. So very interesting story there. But the element is air because a spider literally weaves its webs in the air between two objects that connect it. Spiders commonly will spin a web in a place that they perceive to be undisturbed. So if you don't want spiders in your house, make sure that you dust your house. Because where they see dust, it means that the place is undisturbed and they'll weave their webs. So just dust your house regularly, clean regularly. Spiders also don't like strong smells. So if you clean your house with pine gel or you spray your house with peppermint uh, spray, and I will put um, the recipe in the comments for peppermint spray. If you don't want spiders in your house, um, that's what you use. Um, we used to get these great big grain spiders that would come down from the palm trees. And we once found one perched on, the, on our door. It was quite um, unsettling. <laughs> 
especially for those that are afraid of spiders in the house. So uh, we sprayed all the doors and all the windows with peppermint spray and we never saw them again. Um, interesting, when you watch Harry Potter, Ron Weasley is petrified of spiders and you know, he is then taught a spell. So when his worst fears come, he's then taught because in this particular exercise, they are taught how to deal with their fears. Um, and he has his spider on roller skates. So it turns, turns uh, you know, it turns it into something funny. But that's an aside. So the message of the spider is to tune into the energetic grids around you. Where can you send your energy for healing? Spiders are masters of communication. Their webs connect us to nature, the sky, land, sea, and air. These webs are information highways. They are the energetic ley lines around the earth, the golden webs between the trees that form a grid to hold the space, the golden cords we send out to one another. Spiders are the dream weavers that connect the earth and the heavens and maintain the webs between both the inner worlds and cosmic realms. Excuse me. They show us what is possible when we look outside our limiting beliefs. They weave their webs without any restraints of gravity and the, the silk they produce weight for weight is stronger than steel. Have you ever tried getting rid of cobwebs? <laughs> you will know exactly what I'm talking about. It's, they're indestructible. They teach us how to make our visions and dreams a reality. Spiders are often feared, but I ask you to look beyond your perception and listen to their message. If you pull this card, you are being asked to look at your dreams and aspirations more closely, the ones you wish to fulfill but have been holding back from. The spider can be your biggest guide in fulfilling these if you call on his energy. The spider also asks you to do some earth healing, to tune into the energetic grids around you. Open your heart and send your heart's light downwards with the intention of lifting, linking up with the energetic grid of the earth. You can call an Archangel Metatron to assist you and the spider to repair these grids. Archangel Metatron is a keeper of sacred geometry and is prevalent in working and protecting the energetic grid structures around the earth. Crystal companions are spiderweb jasper, selenite and moldavite. Selenite is white in color and it is a powerful healing crystal it can be used to charge and cleanse your crystals and it's associated with the energy of the moon again there's an in interesting reference to sacred geometry because every spider web is built according to very precise geometric principles and which is what makes it so strong and and uh, able to do its function of trapping the prey um, that the spider feeds on. And you get tiny webs made by tiny spiders and huge webs made by huge spiders. Some webs are even capable to, of trapping birds. That's what you call the bird-eating spiders. If you ever go to Atlanta and you drive up from the city into the mountains, you see these very tall trees with these huge spider webs with birds caught in them. Um, Luckily, they're very high up in the trees where the birds actually fly. I think I might freak out if I, you know, encountered a web of that size or the spider that made it. But that is the lesson of the spider. She's a dream weaver and associated with helping the earth repair the energetic grid or the ley lines that are around it. And if you go to places like Mpumalanga, which sits on... I think there are a number of ley lines that flow through the area. Um, there was a lot of spiders there, different vibrant colored spiders, but lots of spiders. <laughs> so it makes me believe that there is some truth to what the guidebook is saying about the role of spiders and, and healing the earth. The next animal companion creature is the butterfly, and the butterfly obvious message about transformation is about emerging the element is air because it can fly and the meaning is take the leap of faith 
And interestingly, the leap of faith, that energy is associated with the four in tarot, which is the first card, card zero in tarot, which is the very beginning. So if the fall appears in your tarot card reading, you're being encouraged to take a leap of faith. And the butterfly message in this oracle deck is about taking that leap of faith. And it says, you are emerging, dear heart. You are growing. You have reached a stage where you are in transition, leaving outdated beliefs, old timelines being offered up for healing, clearing karma within and around you. Your soul aspects are working so hard under the surface. You can't always see how much work is being done, but you may feel it. It's time to step into this new flow with grace, to trust the leap, open your wings and fly. Because you have enough support around you to catch you if you fall, but you won't fall. You are in the flow of your heart's light and it will never lead you astray. astray. Butterflies are messages from the angels, a sign that they are close to you always. I find when I'm outside, whether I'm in my garden or I'm out in the countryside, butterflies always come and it's always a beautiful, reassuring message. And the crystal companions are clear quartz, Lemurian seed, and Sheba shell. Clear quartz is known as the master healer. It literally is clear. You can see through it. It's very powerful at concentrating the sun's energy. So don't make the mistake of wearing clear quartz against your skin in the sun. You will actually feel that sun burn you. I think... It's the same energy or the same principle that people use when trying to start a fire with a magnifying glass. The clear, thick, clear glass helps focus the light on a particular place and you can start a fire. I always, when I wear my bracelet, which has a very large clear quartz crystal bead, I actually turn it around to make sure that that quartz crystal isn't in the sun because without fail, it actually burns and it hurts. So it's called the Master Healer. It heals a, a number of different um, issues within your aura because it speaks to all your chakras because it's clear. Um, so it channels the entire electromagnetic spectral from, spectrum from the red, which speaks to your base or root chakra, right up to the violet, which speaks to your crown chakra. It, it channels the entire electromagnetic spectrum. So that's why it's known as the master healer. So a very good crystal to have around you or to wear. And it works with the energy of the butterfly, which is really about clearing karma, healing, leaving outdated beliefs, transitioning. So very good if you are experiencing a spiritual awakening or you have a spiritual gift that's blossoming or a spiritual calling and you're being, you know, led to serve. The, the butterfly is a very good companion and therefore the clear quartz crystal is powerful. It will help protect you from negative energy and it also offers up its energy to support your different chakras that need healing. Then the next companion is the ladybird. Um, ladybirds are very hardworking insects. They go about their business. They're almost like bees. Um, closet, closet pollinators because they're maybe not as popular. The element of the ladybird and the meaning of the card is luck. The main element is air because ladybirds can fly. And the meaning of the card is all of your manifesting positive thoughts and visualizations have been heard. Ladybirds symbolize luck. You may have been working on a project or have goals to achieve and generally been manifesting for the future. She comes to show you that all your hard work will come to fruition. More happiness is on the way. The ladybird is also a sign to slow down. Don't rush or try too hard. Stay true to your heart and do everything with honor. And the crystal companions are aventurine. Aventurine is a beautiful green stone, powerful for manifesting money, wealth, abundance. Citrine as well, which is yellow. I'm actually wearing a citrine pendant. I don't know if you'll be able to see that. It's yellow in color. Citrine also is good for working with your solar plexus chakra and attracting abundance, particularly money. 
the venturine works with your heart chakra because of the green when the heart chakra is open and the energy flows you can manifest abundance easily sometimes lack of abundance or poverty is one of the symptoms of a blocked heart chakra so once you open up your heart you heal the trauma that caused you to create that armor you'll start to manifest abundance and jade as well which is green in color so green and yellow associated with um, generating wealth green carries the vibration of blue which is associated with your throat chakra and the yellow which is associated with your solar plexus plexus chakra so when you have the self-confidence self-esteem courage that is associated with a abundant and flowing energy or in your solar plexus chakra as well as the blue which symbolizes your communication you know getting messages and intuitions from the divine as well particularly through your hearing um, if you're clear audience and have that gift but if you have good communication and you have self-confidence self-esteem courage and optimism you then get the vibration of the green which allows you to give love receive love and manifest abundance so that is the link between green the color green the crystals that are green that support that chakra as well as the message of the ladybird card which is around luck and abundance and this actually links to the suit of pentacles in tarot so there are certain cards in the pentacles like the nine of pentacles which is about wealth the ten of pentacles which is about the ultimate wealth um the six of pentacles which is about equal giving and receiving the four of pentacles which is about saving money um, although when taken to extreme or the card is reversed that can come across as stinginess um, there are others as well but those are the main cards that i can remember in tarot which symbolizes that luck and that abundance um, within the tarot um, card suits then the next card we're going to talk about is the chameleon and i have a phobia of chameleons that i've been working very hard to heal i don't know why um, but i did get some guidance some time ago about there's a story about in, in guni cosmology or myth there's a story that the most high the creator sent two messages to humanity one came with the lizard and the other one came with the chameleon and the lizards the, the lizard was actually sent after the chameleon the chameleon was sent first to humanity with a message that human beings would live forever then the lizard came after or was sent after the chameleon and the lizard's message was that at a certain point in time human beings would die which is somewhat links to the biblical passage where god says after the angels come down to earth and take human wives he then says my spirit shall not contend with man's forever he shall live for 120 days meaning 120 years max so in the zulu tradition um when someone brings a word or a message or brings a word or a message and then a message comes afterwards that maybe is contrary or different um, the people will say we will hold on to the message of the lizard Sizobamba Elentulo is the lizard and basically mean we will accept the message that came first so there's actually a place in Guazulu Natal called Guabambelentulo. I'm not quite sure what happened there, but probably something to do with the message and receiving the message that comes first. But um, that's I think that is why there's a fear and dread of the chameleon among 
Africans. Um, and, and uh, you know, I think the other thing that spooks people about chameleons is their ability to change color and blend into their surroundings. And the fact that their eyes like roll around and have got like a complete 360 view that just freaks everybody out. Um, the tongue is sticky. So while the chameleon doesn't necessarily bite a human being, I think what then happens is if you're mis unfortunate enough to be bitten by a chameleon, it won't come off because the tongue is sticky. Um, so apparently the um, remedy is to um, put some snuff on its nostrils and then apparently it will let, let go. I don't know how true that is. It's just something that I heard. But I'm just talking about the chameleon and the myths and the associations with the African tradition. So the chameleon talks about your soul tribe and its elements are air and earth because usually it's high up in the trees and um, but obviously still connected to earth. And the message of the chameleon is it's safe to be seen. Learning who you are and how to be comfortable in your own skin is something we must all experience. You are not alone in this. The desire to be seen for our true potential is often pulled down by the fear of being seen for who we really are. So the fear versus desire um, plays out in terms of us having confidence to be seen as we are. Some people are born confident, but for a lot of us, that is not the case. We go through many phases of trying to fit in while trying to find our place. It can be easier to blend in, especially when growing up. The chameleon does it for protection, perhaps like we do. You are learning to adapt to new situations and challenges, so give yourself time. Once you have decided you wish to be seen, others will see you for all that you are. They will feel your unique energy and connect with that. Pulling the chameleon card symbolizes that your soul tribe are on their way to you. And Crystal Companions are Dumor Tierite, I'll spell it, D-U-M-O-R-T-I-E-R-I-T-E, -E -E. Dumor Tierite, then Hiddenite, very interesting name, and Wolfenite. I'm not really familiar with any of these crystals, but it will be interesting to find out along the way. I think for a lot of us who have healing gifts and reluctantly accepted our calling um, the chameleon carries a worthy message for us which is to it's safe to be seen um, a lot of us who are healers have healing gifts have a calling to heal carry the vibration of having been healers in a past life we also carry traumatic past life memories of being persecuted for our beliefs Boko Dineon Lanzi talks about that. She's done past life regression, seen her past lives. And in a past life, she was persecuted for her beliefs. And what it does is when we come into this incarnation, into this life, we carry that trauma, we carry that fear, and we spend a long time running from our gifts, running from our calling, wanting to blend in, wanting to be like other people. Personally, that was my experience until at some point I was forced to accept that this is who I am, this is who I need to be, I need to carry out my mission, and I have come into the li this life to heal some of that past trauma as well as some of the ancestral trauma that has been experienced by people in my lineage, and I'm here, here to heal all of that and to teach others to do the same. So I think for me, the, for the longest time, the chameleon was something that was, you know, not my favorite thing to see because I think subliminally I was getting that message. I did also receive guidance from my guides some time ago that that old story about the lizard and the chameleon. It's literally two races, reptilian races of extraterrestrials. One race of extraterrestrials wanted to control humanity and use our resources and their bloodlines are still very much alive on earth today you know a lot of them are you know in big business if you believe in the illuminati that is their agenda the reptilian agenda that is expressed there um, but one race came to oppress to conquer to take over while the other that is 
more gentle wanted to work with humanity so the one that said you people will die um, was the first set of reptilians that arrived and then the others that arrived tried to teach humanity certain things so that is the the other backstory the backstory to the um lizard versus chameleon um story that we all heard growing up and the last animal companion that i am going to talk about is the rabbit i mean rabbits are cute you may have kept rabbits growing up at least we did in our in in, in our household maybe you still keep rabbits uh, you know i see rabbits all around um, rabbits are very prolific they breed um, but they're also very gentle sensitive animals they are associated with ishtar isis astarte and other traditions you may know her as aphrodite or venus um, in the kemetic tradition she is known as Auset. She is the original archetype of the mother with the child. So that is our set with her child Horus on her lap. And that is the inspiration for Mary, um, the mother of Jesus, with Jesus on her lap. So the Madonna and child image is much older than Christianity. It dates back to Kemet with our set with Horus on her lap. But the rabbit is associated with her. The rabbit symbolizes a sensitive soul. The elements are air and earth. And the message of the rabbit is to strengthen your boundaries and cut cords. The rabbit is curious but cautious. She is wary because she feels so much. Be aware of the energies around you at the time. Feel into what's held in your space, your home and land. It may be time to cleanse them. You are a sensitive soul who feels so much of the unseen around you. This card is not a caution, but a reminder to be gentle and kind to yourself. If you are around people who you feel may be draining you, reclaim your energy. Work on your solar plexus and cleanse it with selenite or any energizing stones, sunstone, amber, honey, calcite or citrine. And the crystal companions, if you pull this card or the rabbit comes to your consciousness, Somehow it's crazy lace agate, moss agate, and apatite. Moss agate is a beautiful white stone with flecks of green, powerful healing stone. You can wear it particularly in the winter when you have flu, if you're feeling, you know, like your throat and your head and all of, you know, the, the other symptoms that are associated with flu. You know, everything's hurting. Um, moss agate is, is a very good healing stone um, so it's associated with the rabbits for sensitive people highly sensitive people empaths um, you may be drawn to or see rabbits all the time every now and again we have a rabbit that's escaped from our neighbors come into our garden uh, for sanctuary because i think ours is the only house in the street that doesn't have dogs so they'll come and <laughs> hide for a couple of days and be off on their way again, um, which is always very beautiful to see. Um, the rabbit is associated with Easter because um, Ishtar, Astarte, Venus, Aphrodite, Aset. Um, it is a, an animal that is abundant, um, that breeds very easily and breeds in multiples. And um, I don't want to use that popular expression, um, even though the video is not for children, it's not the right thing to say about rabbits. But when you know, you know. Um, so rabbits are gentle, sensitive creatures, and because of their propensity to breed, they're associated with the goddess of love and with Easter. So that's why the Easter bunny carries eggs. Um, because it's a symbol of fertility and, and abundance. So this will be the last video in the series on animal guides. And I hope you find this useful. I do encourage you to find watch the whole um, series of videos if you have time. 
it's important that you just get to understand the messages that the animal kingdom has for us um, because there's there's wisdom that nature offers us that allows us to heal ourselves and uh, do the things that facilitate the healing of others i find the messages in the deck very useful especially for dream interpretation the deck only has 44 cards so it doesn't have all the messages for all the animals maybe one day when i find time i will try to create a deck with animal wisdom Animal wisdom is associated with earth energies. Um, also, there's some animals associated with the air and water. Um, but nature is pretty much about earth. So if you have strong earth energy or guides that have a strong affinity to earth, to air, to water, you'll find that certain creatures always appear before you and they have messages for you and you'll learn to use your intuition, tap into it, understand the message. It's also good to meditate because as you meditate, you give your brain a little bit of a holiday and you also then allow your subconscious and your intuition to work and you receive messages from your guides that way. So thank you for watching. Thank you for liking, sharing and subscribing. I really appreciate all of the engagement and I hope that you have a pleasant evening or a pleasant rest of your day depending on when you're watching. And I look forward to making another video and thanks again for watching.